All right, welcome. So in today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to go from starting a brand new community and beating State of Decay on the hardest difficulty, Lethal Zone. Now, I've done some Lethal Zone guides in the past, but this 2024, um, we have some changes. Uh, with the curveball update, and things like that being introduced to the game. Uh, there's a, a different way to approach the game for sure, especially with some of these curveballs you can kick and really, really throw a wrench into the game. Now, I plan on doing a full walkthrough. If you guys aren't used to how I do my walkthroughs or wa guided walkthroughs is what I'd like to call, call them, is I start from the very beginning of the game and I break the game down step by step. Now, a lot of some people might not enjoy that. If not, hey, I get it. It is what it is. Uh, some people do like that approach because State of Decay is a very dynamic game. There's no black and white. There's no, oh, well, this is the way to do this. Like, there are some things that are like that, but for the most part, um, my situation and your situation can, could be completely different um, just due to the fact that what's there, who's there, what zombies are around, if there's ferals, if there's juggernauts, if there's hostile enclaves, um, you know, if there's 10 zombies, if there's fives, there's just so many different dynamics that can change. There's no script in this game. There's no set story points. So everything can be different. So I could sit here and tell you, hey, this is what you got to do and you could play your game and it could look absolutely nothing like what I showed you in a um, stage environment you know because that's how a lot of videos are is there's staged environments where people are trying to teach you a very black and white approach to a problem but State of Decay is not that kind of game. So the way I approach my guides is I break it down. We go minute by minute um, throughout the playthrough. I explain thing as, things as I'm doing them, and it kind of gives you an idea of you know how your mindset should be, what you should do, what you should be thinking when you're approaching certain situations and things like that. So um, that's where we're gonna go from here. I'm gonna start off by showing you you know best maps to play for a new player. Um, best traits and talents and things like that to roll with. A lot of the times that's also subjective and based on your play style, but I'm going to kind of give you my look on it. Now, when it comes to um, starting a, a lethal game, you want to look at things like, uh, the main things you want to look at is traits and um your fifth skill is, it, it kind of matters, but I, honestly, traits on your survivors are the number one thing that you should focus on uh, because traits can make a, a, you know, take one cook from being a bum to being an all-star, you know what I mean? And it's, it's just the traits. And I feel like those are very, very overlooked in, in, in this game. Um, but another thing is the best training, regardless of what I say in this video, what I'm teaching you, the best way for you to get better in lethal zone is to just play lethal zone. Um, even if you're a dread zone, a standard zone player, if you play lethal zone, you might only survive 10 minutes. You get ripped apart by plague feral. Okay. Start a new game. What, what do you got to lose? You know what I mean? It, it just delete the community, start the new game. Um, play again. And I promise every single time you play lethal zone, you're going to last for 45 minutes. Then you'll last for an hour. Then you last for two hours and throwing yourself into the fire is the best way because you're going to learn, uh, playing nightmare zone is not going to prepare you for lethal zone. I don't care what anybody says. The, 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 Difficulty curve between Nightmare and Lethal is astronomical. So playing Nightmare is not going to prepare you for Lethal. Now, just having an understanding of the game um, obviously will get you ready for Lethal, but the only way that you're going to get good at Lethal Zone is by playing Lethal Zone, and that's it. Uh, so don't think, oh, well, I'm going to play Standard, Dread, Nightmare, and then work my way up to Lethal. Uh, you're you're kind of just slow. Just, if you're a Standard Zone or a Dread Zone player and you want to, your goal is to play Lethal Zone, just play Lethal Zone. That's it. Um, you got to get used to it. There's just so you're going to fail. I've, I've wiped plenty of communities myself. You're going to fail. Even if you're trying to follow the things I'm showing you in this guide, you're still going to probably fail at some points. And that's okay. It, it is what it is. Start over again. And I promise after a few communities, learning from your mistakes, you're going to be able to push on. So with this long-winded intro, <laughs> let me get into the meat and potatoes of this, guys. So um, obviously we're playing on Lethal Zone. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll get that going. Uh, now for maps. When it comes to maps, maps to avoid, I would say, is Trumbull Valley right off the bat. Now there is ways to make Trumbull Valley into one of the easiest ways to play Lethal Zone. But I'd say if, the, if you're trying to just get used to it, uh, the starting base in Trumbull is the worst in the game. It will mess your whole playthrough up. You only get two small slots. You don't get anything else. This is the hardest starting base in the game, is in trouble. But 
the mid to end, end game is a lot easier in the Trumbull Valley because you have a lot more loot, you have a lot more resources. Um, it has the strongest, um, what is it, the landmark outpost in the entire game that really just makes the game easy mode. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can take advantage of in this. It's a really, really monster basis. But the beginning game is going to be the hurdle that most players can't get over. And in one of, in my previous Lethal Zone guide, I actually showed you guys playing in Trumbull Valley. It was kind of a mistake on my end, um, so we're gonna I'm, gonna I'm gonna do you guys right now. Providence Ridge is also one of the easier maps um, to play on, but again, it has the same problem with the starter base. The starter base in this is a lot weaker than the starter bases in the original three maps. Now. So we'll just say Providence Ridge, Trumbull Valley, those are out of the equation. So that leaves Cascade Hills, Maker Valley, Drucker County. I would discount Maker Valley off the rip because this map has one of the worst loot distributions in Lethal Zone. Le or Nightmare Zone and below Maker Valley is the best map in the game, hands down. Uh, but Lethal Zone, it has the worst loot distribution. So that leaves Cascade Hills, Drucker County. Just due to bases, I'd say Drucker County has some really, really good bases. Um, but I would say when it comes to loot distribution, I'd probably have to give it the Cascade Hills. So, um, and play cart distribution, I'd probably give it the Cascade Hills. So I'd say if you're going to pick a map to play on, I'd probably say Cascade Hills is your best bet to have an easy go at uh, Lethal Zone. And uh, this is the map I'm gonna show you guys on. There's a lot of, the starter area in Cascade, I feel like is, it's prime. And, and go, throughout this uh, guide, you'll understand why. Uh, just, you, you'll see the, the loot that we're pulling and stuff like that. So I say go Cascade Hills. That also helps the fact that this is my favorite map. Uh, but when it comes to rolling survivors now, which we're gonna be getting into here, or. Uh, so no boons. Uh, if you have your boons unlocked, obviously you probably don't need this guide. Uh, these boons you can't like. If you unlock boons in Nightmare Zone, you can't use them in Lethal. You could you have to unlock the boons in Lethal Zone, which means you're already beating Lethal Zone, which means you don't need this guide. So I'm not going to use boons in this because it would make no sense because you won't have them in your playthrough. Uh, so no boons. And now, when it comes to rolling survivors, uh, when I say to look for traits, that's this box right here, guys. Now, uh, I did put out a new player guide. If you, uh, uh, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be saying things, uh, hoping that you have a basic understanding of State of Decay, uh, because if not, then you should probably go check out my new player guide. Um, but. Uh, this guide will, you don't have to be an expert. This guide will also, you know, kind of cater to people who might not be 100% versed in everything the game has to offer. So uh, don't just click off because, you know, the, yeah, you don't, don't have to be a pro for this. But I, I am going to be talking like you have an understanding of, you know, some basic features in the game. Uh, but obviously, these are your traits. Now, one of the things that people don't know that you can do is say you might not know the traits as well as I do. You're like, shares everything. I don't, I don't know what shares everything. Is that a good trait? Is that a bad trait? Is hiker a good trait or a bad trait? There was no way to know these things unless you busted open a wiki uh, because there's nothing in the UI or the original UI that tells you what these traits are. But now what you can do, um, uh, I'll actually uh, do this for you guys so you can see it. Behind me, um, if I click on one of these, you see how it says details? Um, you click that and now what happens is it brings up a box it shows what that survivor has in their inventory it shows you know what size backpack they have uh so if you want to start with all eight slot backpacks go for it shows their leader type um and then what happens is it shows the traits so you can actually scroll over the box here and it will tell you right above me what the trait is uh these ones don't really do anything so they're not good examples but if they were uh well, let me see here if i can find so right here, for instance, sleeps on the ground. You get one bed, or minus one bed. That that's a that's a pretty good trait. I would have never even thought like, hmm, sleeps on the ground. That's a good trait. Uh, so if you guys are wondering, hey, you know, what's a good trait? What's a bad trait? You can do that. Um, but yeah, I would say roll for traits, not for skills. But I'm going to show you my meta when it comes to lethal zone because stamina is life in stated K. 
Stamina is not going to be or your health. Yeah, like your health goes to zero. Obviously, you'll die, but you have way like your stamina goes to zero. You, there's nothing you can do. You're, you're absolutely screwed. Your health pool is just going to get whittled down. So stamina is life. So I'm going to show you my starting um, way that I go with lethal zone is I usually start with a cook, a chemist and a person with the hygiene fifth skill because what the hygiene fifth skill does is it gives you plague resistance. It gives your whole entire community plague resistance. Um, and now what I'm looking for in that cook and that chemist is more plague resistance. If I can find somebody that has an incredible immune system or um, you know plague, uh, uh, blood plague survivor, those are the type of things that I go, go for. Now, if I roll a really, really good trait, traits to look for, blood, tr blood plague survivor um, is the go-to. So if you find a blood plague survivor, regardless of their fit skill, try to hold on to that person. Uh, so you're gonna sit here, you're gonna roll these survivors until you find the traits and skill combination that you're looking for. I'm gonna do that right now off camera so you guys don't have to sit here and watch me do this for however long. I'm not gonna go too ham because I don't wanna waste too much time uh, trying to roll super great survivors, but I'm gonna try to roll the best I can and then when I get back, uh, I'll discuss what I have, why I chose them, and to give you an understanding of what you guys are looking for. All right, so I'll see you guys then. All right, guys, so we are back. Uh, this is what I ended up with. Didn't take too long. I probably spent like maybe, I don't know, 10 minutes or so uh excuse me i went ahead and i w got this cook uh, now the reason why i generally go cook chemist hygiene is because if you get a cook and a chemist you can start making your own energy drinks and that gives you one of the best stamina items in the game that you can it, it, stamina like i said is life uh so i generally go with that but i wasn't i i, I ran into this other uh this gardener here and they have such a good trait combo i had to go with it so um i'll start with this we got a cook that is indefatigable this is a very this is the best um stamina trait that you can get uh what it does is you get plus 30 stamina and you get minus 40 percent fatigue severity so um they get tired way slower it's the best stamina trait in the game um and then you ha I grabbed uh, the hygienist. Like I said, the hygiene gives your whole community plague resistance, which in lethal zone, blood plague is very, very dangerous. So kind of having that blanket plague resistance is almost a must. And it's really, really good from hygiene. There's also a couple traits that you can get from, or hero bonuses. There's a couple hero bonuses that you can get uh, from your survivors that also will give your community that blanket plague resistance and they all stack too so you could stack hygiene with um, you know some of the, the hero bonuses and you can get a nice uh, community that's quite resistant to blood plague uh, now when it comes to Jose here our gardener which I never really run a gardener because of my usual meta that I run in lethal zone I could not pass up on a high pain threshold and just keeps going. Uh, oh, actually, I'm wrong, guys. So just keeps going is actually better than indefatigable. I didn't I didn't know that. So just keep going is the best uh, stamina trait, unless there's one better than that and I'm tripping. But uh, so this is the plus 45 max stamina, plus 40 or minus 40 percent uh, fatigue severity. And then we also get plus 30 health and then plus 50% fighting experience because of the high pain threshold. So this guy is just a monster. Uh, comboed with our plague resistance from our hygienist, he's more resistant to blood plague, takes less damage, and has more stamina. He's a monster. Uh, starts off, he's got a baseball bat. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, he's a good survivor, good survivor. Now I will use the gardening. I'll try to take advantage of that um, early game because early game lethal food is a little on the sus side because sus side because every single survivor eats two food so generally that's one of the first things you need to focus on is getting your food under control because you'll go zero real real quick and there's not a whole lot of areas to loot for food outside of plague territory so uh yeah let's get into this guys okay guys so one thing i forgot to mention this is actually days after recording episode one i was just talking about it in episode two uh but yeah we're coming back because i forgot to mention if you're rolling survivors uh we're, you know i told you about the guys with the traits and and things that you should bring with you now there's two different ways to to start the game and 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 there's a, a big um, I, I think people kind of mix these two things up because I preach against one of them uh, for new lethal zone players because you're making the game harder on yourself. But the other way kind of gets balled up in that, but it's not the case. So a lot of the ways that you'll see people quote unquote want to start playing lethal zone um, is what they do is they'll start a community on, I don't know, standard zone. 
They'll get all their survivors. They'll level them up. They'll go out. They'll loot. They'll clear the map, right? They get their base. They get the best stuff in the game. And then they switch their game over to a lethal zone map. They swap everything over to lethal. They pretty much go take that same community and they just move it into lethal zone. And they think that that's the best way to go about it. Now, yes, you are going to start the game with everything. But what's going to happen is you're going to go from playing in standard zone to playing in max difficulty lethal zone. Max difficulty. Now, when you start a brand new game of lethal, the game of stated case kind of scales. You start at like lethal zone level one, let's just say, out of 10. All right. And when you start the game, you start at level one. And as you progress through the game, as your characters rank up, you gain more standing, you kill more play cards, the game starts going to two, three, four, five, and so forth, all the way up to 10. 10 is where you're getting triple feral packs, max zombie hordes. The zombie density on the map is insanity. <clears throat> now, what ends up happening is when you take a community that's already maxed out, all the survivors are maxed out, their levels are up, you have, uh, you've killed a whole map's worth of play cards and you transition them into a lethal zone, you just skip lethal zone one, two, and so forth, and you just start at lethal zone 10. So when you spawn in, you're gonna have triple feral packs immediately. You're going to have the max horde sizes immediately. Zombie density is gonna be the highest it can be immediately. It's not gonna give you that warm up that that you know to get used to the difficulty to get used to all of the other n nuances of lethal zone um on top of the zombie threat you're gonna have to just deal with everything all at once so that's where you'll see guys who are like man you know i brought i started a lethal zone community i had everything guns and my whole community got wiped and it's like yeah because you just you're you were a, a dread zone player or a nightmare player and you just jumped into the hardest difficulty at its hardest um i don't care how many guns you have it does it's not going to help you at that point so I tell people, avoid starting a lethal zone map like that. But now when you're starting a fresh playthrough, uh, like we did, like we are right now, what you can do though, uh, to make it easier on yourself until, cause a lethal zone fresh start is not something for new lethal zone players. Um, necessarily like that is something that you kind of do to challenge yourself a little bit like hey i'm gonna start brand new fresh survivors nothing no boons no this no that you know what i mean that's what people start to do when they want to start challenging themselves but what you can do is um when you're rolling for your survivors we all have our legacy pools so if you're a lethal zone player that means you've played you know at least standard you've played some maybe dread zone games you played some nightmare zone games you've built up your le legacy pool what you can do now is say you know what i don't want this survivor uh, i want to bring survivors with me um in this playthrough you can remove these people okay and what you can do is you go here and you press recruit uh it's space on um, PC, I think it's A on Xbox. And what that does, it's gonna bring up your legacy pool. Now, these are all the characters that you've beat the game with already. Now, you can bring these characters into a fresh Lethal Zone game, and it will not change the difficulty of the game because they are gonna start off without their hero bonuses. They're gonna start off without any standing. But the one benefit is you will start off with gear whatever gear they have on them. So for instance, I could check, you know, this is an incredible immune system, hygiene survivor. Look at her stats. You know what I mean? They're, she's already leveled up. She's got powerhouse. Uh, if I check her inventory, you know, she's got guns from one of my pre previous playthroughs. Uh, so she has an AR, she's got an M17, she's got a Timberwolf, uh, Plague Cure on her. She has gear, you know what I mean? So if I brought her into this new community, I'm not going to be punished by having a leveled up survivor and I'm not going to and I still get the guns that she has with no drawbacks you know what I mean um now some people might be like, oh that's cheating and those are the purists don't fucking listen to them let them go be themselves and play the game how they want to play it play the game how you want to play you're new okay you're new to lethal zone you don't have to play like them and that is where a lot of people start having a problem with lethal is they like oh well you know, I'm, I'm new to lethal. I have to play it like, the, no, you don't. Okay, let the purists be purists. They have 10, they have 10,000 hours in the game. All right, they they didn't start off lethal zone, um, you know, just going in fresh start. They didn't start playing with mods fresh start. No, they, they, they worked their way up to that. So disregard all those people. Play the game 
um, you know, whatever's easier for you. Once you get used to lethal and you start beating it, and now you're like, okay, I got the feeling, I'm used to this. Okay, you know, I want to challenge myself a little bit. I want to start with fresh survivors, then go ahead and do that. But you don't need to start doing that. But if you do want to play like that, that is how I'm showing you right now how to play in this playthrough. This is how to beat lethal, fresh start, no anything. Um, follow my guide and I'll, you know, I'll try to bring you to success. But if you are still having an issue and you want to kind of make it a little easier on yourself, uh, this is something you can do. Uh, you know, like this guy, my blood plague survivor. Look at the stuff he has on him. Uh, he's got an infinite rage. He's got, you know, all types of goodies here. Uh, I could have started the game with him if I wanted to. You know what I mean? And um, that's what you can do. So go ahead. If you want to bring some of these legacy survivors in, you literally just click them. Um, you hit recruit. They'll throw them on the thing, and then you just go like that. Uh, and that that's thats what you can do with that. So I wanted to make sure I, I, I explain this, guys, to you because it is a part of the game, and it is something that I want to make sure you guys know every single thing that you could do uh, to, to play Lethal Zone. So, all right, back to the gameplay. All right, so here we are now uh, loading into a Lethal Zone map. What the devs like to do is they'll throw a feral relatively close to the spawn area now because there's three of us i, I heard it up heard it up there um because there's three of us we should be able to kill it quite easy how am i gonna do that all right so i'll just grab that in my inventory so as you guys can see they started us off with two material rucksacks which is actually quite good um but first thing i like to do when i spawn into this map is I like to go up in this area here to loot the campsites. Uh, it gives you a nice starting. Uh, you get some big backpacks. Uh, you can get some good gear up here. So I generally like to loot this area out. Now, if you don't want to tangle with that feral, if you are a little on the uh, uncomfortable side of uh, still dealing with plague ferals, um, then just avoid the area. You don't have to go up there. I'm pretty sure if you left, came back at another time, um, the feral might despawn. It might, it might move on. So, but I'm gonna go up there and I'll show you um, how you can kind of gang up on a feral. Now, you yourself just worry about you and taking damage. Um, your people, they'll be alright, or they'll get ripped apart. The... Okay, so we'll stay crouched here. I see a bloater over there. Screamer right there. So we want to make sure we don't aggro that screamer. And I don't spot a I don't see a feral right now, so careful around that screamer. But we do want to take care of the screamer. We um if he screams, it'll be a bad time for us. And uh, it looks pretty clear right now for a feral. Let's see, I should lucky he didn't turn 180. I looked away for a second, wasn't paying attention to that screamer, got complacent, and uh, he only turned uh, 90 degrees, think, because <laughs> if he turned 180, I, he would have been staring right at me. <clears throat> so this one birthday, I got a Doberman puppy, Kojak. There we go, eight slot. Dog, but then he got too big, and I had to take him back to the pound. How about we find a quiet, I Kojak. Spot to hold up. Ooh, I, I, I think that's a... Anyway. So this one birthday, I got a Doberman puppy, Kojak, happiest dog. But then he got too big, and I had to take him back to the pound. I never seen eyes so desperately scared and confused. Well, not until the first time I saw some dude getting eaten by the Z's. Now, uh, there was a movie that came out, guys. That. That had that dog and that lady was trapped in a car in the like junkyard there. I forgot what the name of that dog was. I felt like it was something around the lines of Kojak. All right, so like I said, we're just gonna kind of move our way through here, watching for that feral. Hit this place up. Uh, our our goals are trying to get a crossbow from these campsites. It makes a really really easy start. Uh, and some bigger backpacks. But right now we're not having any luck. Okay, so I don't see a feral. I think we're okay. But we there is a bloater over here, and we don't have a ranged weapon right now, so I'm not worried about me. I'm worried about the survivors here because they're they they can act kind of stupid sometimes. Okay, we got bolts. And they'll run into the smoke. Okay. 
Okay, so no luck on the crossbow, guys, unfortunately. Uh, hopefully in your playthrough you find Look one. Out. We got a freak over here. We just want to watch him. Okay, so now up here, some hidden uh, special weapon crates and a good bit of zombies. We should be able to clear through these guys, no problem. Get a little bit of AOE from the uh, blunt weapon. Oh, let me uh, move my camera. Sorry, guys. I didn't even think to do that. I'm blocking the mini-map on you guys. <clears throat> okay. We still have a chance of pulling a crossbow up here. Nice. Uh, we got a now, mace here. I'm so tired of living on the run. We need a place we can defend. No room for that. And some espresso. Okay, <clears throat> so no crossbow, unfortunately. Um, it is what it is. is it, okay, so here we go. This is where things are going to get kind of annoying because I know how to deal with these bloaters, but because these guys are with me, they're going to probably Bloater do something right stupid. Uh, so, so you, yeah, you can see there. I had a feeling that was going to happen. Generally, uh, you can run there and get it to chase you, run away, but the survivors here, they just do stupid stuff. We could use a base of operation. But now his lungs are going to be burned, and he's going to have a little bit of plague on him. Though the plague is not a big deal. It's the injury that he took from breathing the smoke that's the worst. One of the many reasons why I don't roll with... Um, followers in lethal zone they're they're more of a liability than they are an asset for the most part we know that other bloaters over there so we're gonna go around okay so our trip to the camps another screamer and that's the thing is when you're moving, uh, especially in lethal, you're scanning for ferals constantly. Um, but you always want to kind of just be aware of what's in front of you uh, instead of just like kind of going just full bore, full speed. Now, in lethal zone, the normal zombies scream uh, when just at random times. And it's very loud. Um, it will aggro zombies from far away. So you want to make sure that you try your best to not go into places where zombies can't reach you. Like a lot of the times you'll see people climb on top of cars when they get overwhelmed. All that does is it starts the zombies in this weird screaming pattern. And they'll just start calling everything all over the place. So I'm going to hop up here real quick. We'll scan the area because I heard a barrel. So I'm going to use this billboard here to scan the area really quick. See what we can see. Now you can use these billboards to spot freaks. Screamer call for backup. Watch out. There it is. There's a feral over there. That 
should do it. Okay, so now we know where the feral is. Uh, it's right down there. Now, the crappy thing is, is I have to get gas to get this car up and running. Um, but our goal is to definitely try to avoid that feral the best we can. That's one of the things I tell you guys. If you want to, when you first spawn in, uh, hop up on top of that. Uh, hop up on top of this billboard and see if you can scan. That's a screamer. Yeah, we didn't have much when I was growing up. Barely more than we have now, honestly. So when we didn't have enough money to feed the dog, boom. No more dog. Really just that simple. Yeah. Um, so you gotta learn the sounds, guys, of the freaks. That low gurgle right there, that's the sound a screamer makes when they're standing idle. Um, so I'm going to take out this zombie. And we'll take out the screamer. Now the reason why I'm being cautious here is Feral's right there. There's a good chance he's going to aggro to us, so let's move this way. He might have aggro. They have a very, very big a yep. aggro radius. Even when you're in stealth, um, they'll, they'll pick you up your scent from far away. Now I could check the map. I could see where he is because we marked him. He's going towards the back over there, so we could move down this way. Now there's a good chance, guys, that we're gonna have to fight this feral. Like as much as we want to avoid it, um, that might not be a possibility. Okay, that bloater's gonna come over here. So let's get over here and try to see if we can find this gas really quick. But yeah, once we mark the feral, uh, it's pretty easy to keep track of them. I guess it's not nothing. Okay, no gas yet. So these are the two spots you want to check that gas can on the porch and then this will gar uh, generally guarantee you a gas can get your car up and running there it is okay so now what i'm going to do is we're going to crouch down i'm going to check so as you guys can see the feral is now up in that back area beyond the fence uh right near where we got to get our car so that's what i meant by it, it's probably going to be unavoidable so before i even bring my um might get the car and bring it to base which is generally the first thing i do what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go and i'm gonna drop these survivors back off at home because i can move a lot quicker by myself and i don't have to worry about these guys getting chewed up by that feral because that's generally what's going to happen to a lot of you guys when you start your new game is even if you're good at dodging a feral your community members are not and they're just going to get shredded so um we're already over here we're going to just get these guys moved in real quick to jump start the fun hop the wall here there's a screamer inside the base i can hear it which is really crappy so this is going to be a little on the difficult side uh to do quietly Up. We could live here. So we're clearing these rooms out. I think the screamer's facing outside. Nope, he's facing this way. Okay, so that screamer's gonna start going down towards that combat. 
We're gonna grab him, kill him. I can't keep this up. Now, one of the things is he spit down there, and I hope my survivors didn't walk into it like idiots. But we'll check him once we get the base secure. Yeah, I'm calling finders keepers on this place. Let's claim it and move in. That's a good idea. But this is why I meant by the game is so dynamic. I, I've, I've claimed this base five times uh, in the past few months. We'll and uh, to improve this place. never had a screamer in the base. I've never seen a screamer. So I'm going to check their injuries real quick. This guy just took a little bit of damage. He's fine. And then Jose here walked into the bloater smoke. He's not too bad. Sounds like a horde pathing. I think they're going to go down the side of the base here. Uh, there's a good chance it's going to aggro when it gets to the backside. So let's just stay vigilant and ready. Okay, so it seems like it's moving off. I'm just looking at the minimap there. Looks like the horde's moving off. Now, early game like this, don't go out of your way, especially in lethal. Don't go out of your way just trying to fight every zombie just because they're there. Um, just let sometimes say just pause for a minute, hold back, and just let the zombies move. Because fighting that horde, like, yeah, I could do it, but there's a chance that one of those zombies might scream. One of those zombies screams might call a feral. That feral is gonna and it could just it, the game just escalates really, really quickly. Um, so I know I'm about to go into the area where there is a feral um, right near my car. So I'm going to try to check my equipment and see, hey, is there anything I could use against this feral if if I have to? First things first, I'm going to get better stamina items. we got some energy drinks, and I'm going to get some better heals. Um, i got these painkillers here. Uh, other than that, i got a pipe bomb. Uh, I could technically, you know, throw it at the feral, use it to stun it, but... Um, uh, it's gonna make a lot of noise, but I'll bring it just in case like shit hits the fan for some reason But because we have good stamina items if I have to 1v1 the feral I can just do that in melee Okay, see you later. I got a thing Okay, so we're gonna go grab our car for that's the number one most important thing I would say is always make sure you get your car If you didn't already get it generally most people probably already have had it drove it down Now, don't get caught in the loops, the looting loops. Like, people, it's, it's, it, I, and I get it. Trust me, I know. Uh, you go past these locations, and it's just like the OCD kicks in, and it's like you have to loot it. And it's like, stick to the plan. I put this out in my new player guide. Uh, last thing I want to do is overburden myself right now with more weight, especially if I want to go toe to toe with a feral. Um, I need all the stamina I can get. So I'm going to check the map again. He looks like he's still on that backside. He probably went into his holding pattern where he's not moving. Okay, car is right there. <clears throat> and there's a feral. So he's still moving around. Okay, so it looks like he's going up that way. Might be able to fuel this up. So I'm just going to keep moving slow. The way this is looking, though, we're going to probably have to fight him. Let's see if he goes that way. And this is what I meant by patience, guys. Just wait, see what the freaks do, especially if you don't want nothing to do with them. And now he's moving. I can bring up my map, track him. You can even put a waypoint on him. 
That way you can see where he is. It looks like he's coming back this way. Yeah, he's just trolling. Okay, so I'm going to try to get close to this uh, car. We're going to attempt to fuel up without aggroing him. Um, but I'm pretty sure he's going to aggro. I'm surprised he didn't aggro already. Car is fueled up. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get in and just reverse as hard as we can and spin the car. And we're home free. <clears throat> okay, so that horde is still at the edge of my base. <clears throat> We'll let him we'll let him go now the thing is if i get too close to him they'll hear the car so that's why i'm kind of just waiting a second letting him go and that's a lot of the thing about uh lethal zone maybe why a lot of people don't really especially when they play zombie games for like the action and stuff like that lethal zone definitely requires you to kind of slow down a little bit and to know when to fight especially early game once you're mid game late game they do whatever the hell you want you know what i mean but early game especially you definitely want to make sure that you're um you're paying attention so we need materials i already have two bags here in the back of the car which is a perfect meta start okay. like it's so perfect on uh, uh now one of the things i almost forgot myself and i, I want to put this out now um, when you start a game and you, as soon as you get moved into the base, you have a 15 minute buff, which allows you to build facilities faster and, and, uh, stuff like that. I always forget myself. And, and, and I just remembered as soon as you move in, use it, fix this bed, because if not, see, it only takes two minutes, 30 seconds. If not, it takes 30 minutes. Um, so start building things this or fixing this and removing this trash. The second you move into your base. Um, I forget all the time. I end up beating myself up because I'm so focused on other things. Um, and then I'm like, damn, I 30 minutes later, you know, now I just lost all that time, that bonus. So uh, while we're waiting for that to fix, we're going to get more materials because materials are super, super clutch early game. And now we can kind of loot a little bit. You know what I mean? Uh, if you want, you can grab one of your survivors. You know the area is relatively safe up here near your base. If you want a pack mule, uh, grab one of your survivors. You can help load them up. I like to travel solo, though. Um, it's just my thing. The survivors are quite a liability. We're just going to search these trunks. I'm going to make my way over to uh, this site over here. There's some materials. And uh, we're going to scout the area. Uh, especially if you don't know the map uh, as well as most or some people um, If you don't know what buildings what there's a cell tower right here Right next to your base. You just hop up in there Okay, so we're gonna plague zombie here So the zombie should turn and start walking back the other way or turn and start walking my way. But either way, we don't, we don't have to worry about it. Uh, looks like we got about four zombies in this area. Not a whole lot, but if one of them screams that four zombies, you see there's a screamer over here. And this is what I meant by some people would look at me the way I'm playing when I'm like, dude, why are you like, it's just four zombies. A zombie lets off a scream in lethal zone. Whatever you're looking for, it's not here. 
it calls that screamer over here. That screamer comes over. That screamer aggro screams, um, calls in a feral, and it just and the game it just steamrolls. So that's why I said if you don't have to, just take your time. There's no rush right now. I've had plenty of people say, hey, man, you know, I, your, your game always seems so much calmer than mine. And it's just because of how I move around, um, constantly looking at my surroundings uh, and, and assessing, you know, if I make a lot of noise, you make a lot of noise, you're going to see a lot more zombies. Wow, that is a crazy find right there. Um, just pulled a freaking toolkit. Okay, so that's done. Now we're going to get this removed. <clears throat> Let's scout real quick. Now we can spot f freaks up here uh, because we're going to be looting in this area. Now it got dark for me really, really early, guys. And that's because when the longer you take rolling for survivors, um, for some reason, uh, I don't know if uh, the devs intended this, but for some reason, the game time starts when you start rolling for survivors. Uh, so the longer you take the roll, uh, the, the later it's going to be when you start. Now, I just spotted a survey car, guys. That is a yeah, great car make a sweet ride. Um, to start with. Ugh, another play <clears throat> card. Okay, nothing more to see here. Okay, so that survey car is goals. Too bad I already put a gas can into my um, my starter car. But having multiple cars in the beginning of the game, there's nothing wrong with it. Now, one of the things I'm going to tell you guys is how the game works. Right now, I got this mission, living in a materials world. As soon as you install or deposit materials into your base, um, what it does is, is uh, you got to build a facility. The second you build that facility, it's going to spawn in your starter enclave. Now, because I've played on this map so many times, I know the starter enclave is going to spawn in the red storage unit here. This is a good location for materials and fuel early game. But the problem is, is as soon as the enclave moves in, you no longer have access to the resources that were in there until they move out. So what I would tell you to do is before you finish that materials world mission, drive down here, grab the resources out, and then complete that mission spawn in that uh, enclave because now you'll have that resources and fuel materials you, you you want every drop you can get there's a bag of materials all right that's all that was in here got a screamer over there Ooh, nice weapon parts. But you can... So, uh, you can repair things. That's not going to activate the mission. Um, it's just when you build a facility. Now, my cars are here. It's already up and running. I'm going to get that survey car. Uh, but for right now, we'll just take this one down to that location. Because I do want to get that enclave sp spawned in as soon as possible. Mission accomplished. Um, I'm going to save that repair kit. Now we can't, we're going to make one stop on our way down. This is uh, Cascade Hills. One of the things I tell you guys to do is early, as early as you can, hit this military location, uh, this checkpoint, it, and get yourself a, a gun. Uh, usually you can get some kind of handgun or something out of here. Um, just to give yourself that, that coverage for ferals. If you're not good at fighting them in melee, great outpost. Uh, getting yourself on just the starter gun just to cover yourself when you're out here. I'd advise you to do that. Don't, don't. You can completely loot this area, grab everything. I got the car, so we got a little bit of extra space. But make sure you have space for the, at least the two rucksacks that you want to pull out of that shed. Okay. 
Okay, some 762. Not really so, some good pulls right now, guys. Been pretty bad. Okay, here we go. So as you guys can see, we've got a bag of ammo, which I'll definitely take. Some shoddy shells, 9mm, and some bullets. So we'll throw that handgun on us. And uh, I'm going to save some spaces in here for the rucks down here. But now, if a, if a barrel jumps us, I do have a gun that I can defend myself with. Unsuppressed. So I only want to use it in an emergency. That right tells me a plague heart is around here somewhere. Probably um, lots of plague zombies too. So my goal for this playthrough for you guys is I'm going to try to show you how to do this without waking up as many plague hearts as possible. So boom, Feral. If he aggro's, we're going to keep it moving. Okay, he didn't aggro. My so, skin is crawling. Must so be a plague heart nearby. I'm just going to get out the car because the car sound will aggro that Feral. Um, we're going to move up here on foot. Um, so once you're in plague territory, as you guys know, a couple updates ago, they changed it. If you kill zombies, um, outside of stealth in plague territory, you will wake up the plague hearts. as good as it gets in plague territory. Our goal is to try to not wake up plague hearts as much as we possibly can. Okay, so no fuel, unfortunately, but we did get materials, so we'll take that to the car. And this is what I mean by moving slow. I came out, I crouched down immediately, and good thing, because there was a zombie on that side of the fence. Um, there was a chance he could have screamed. Okay, it seems like that feral moved down out of range, so we're okay. All right, let's get back to base and get that mission going. Now I generally only keep the ammo in the mag. I don't need I don't now if you're you know not comfortable with your shooting ability, you can carry extra uh, rounds on you, but the one mag 15 rounds this is an emergency gun. Um, that's more than enough for me right now. Uh, so priorities, lethal zone guys. Now this is generally what you want to prioritize getting the uh, your materials, getting your first facility going and then I'm going to show you guys what to focus on next. But um we got our materials, uh, and you want to make sure you get more than one bag, because that mission is only going to tell you to grab one bag, and then you're good. But the thing is, is to craft your first, one bag is, you're going to start with three, your bag's going to give you five, you're going to be up to eight. To craft your first facility, it costs eight. So what's going to end up happening is you're going to zero yourself out. I like to at least always have a few extra materials. I don't like to zero out my resources, because the thing about zeroing out re materials this is when that day ticker comes. If there's something that requires materials, facilities are going to start breaking. They just break instantly. Now you got to wait 35, 40 minutes to fix them. So never zero yourself out on any resource if possible. What I'm doing here now is I always go out, I loot a bag or two extra. Um, that way you can also build more than one facility if, if you really want. Because right now you got to choose, what's the first facility I want? Do I want a medical bay? Do I want a, or an infirmary? You know, do I want the infirmary or do I want a workshop? Um, I always advise people, it depends on your play style. Early game workshop right off the bat doesn't really do much for you. Um, so I always advise you guys to get a Glad infirmary. Start on building this base up into something real. Uh, get an infirmary and then get a workshop second uh, because like I said, there's nothing really really in the beginning of the game that you're gonna even use the workshop for right off the bat think one of you folks could help us out over here. Okay, so now that enclave be there in no time. The enclave just hit us up um, 
a lot of you guys would probably start running down there to do that. No. First thing you want to focus on is yourself, okay? Because juggling in lethal zone is something that you got to get good at. Resources. Okay, so my my community right now, we need food, we need meds, we need ammo, we need uh, or yeah, food, meds, ammo, and fuel. That needs to happen. So before I do anything else, I'm going to top off my own resources for my community first. So my community first, then worry about, because that mission's not going anywhere. Um, so I'm going to start off with food, because food is one of the big uh, issue points in Lethal Zone. And as soon as that day ticker hits, I'm going to lose three food. So one way to avoid that is I'm going to come in here and we're going to enact rationing. Now, yes, this is going to hit my morale hard. It's going to hit my uh, stamina hard. But I don't want the day ticker to go by. The day ticker happens twice a day. It happens in the morning and it happens at night. So um, if it says you're going to lose six food a day, right, which this does, I'm going to lose six food in one day. Um, that means in one full day, I'm going to lose food. But it happens twice a day. So uh, you'll lose three in the morning, three at night. Um, I know that here in probably 15 minutes or so, as soon as the sun rises, I'm losing three food. I don't want to lose that food. I advise you guys not to lose that food. Uh, so go ahead and act rationing. Now what that's going to do is it's going to cut down on your food output for a little bit. And it's going to kind of give you a little bit of a buffer. Uh, now while we're waiting for that, I know that the uh, survey car is over here. I'm going to come into this area and loot these buildings out and I'm going to uh, fill up the survey car with all the loot and we're going to drive it back. Now, uh, I know there's no gas cans in this these buildings, but there's gas here. So we should be able to get fuel here, fuel the car, loot, bring the stuff back. Uh, so we're going to head out on foot. I see bloaters on the map. I see screamers. So we're just going to kind of watch ourselves. Be careful. I hear a horde. So I'm going to check. So you can see that bloater's on the front side here. We're going to have to deal with him. Bunch of zombies here. So a bloater locked on to me, which is fine. Um, now, the cool thing about bloaters is they only start running at you when they get within range. So what you can do is get away from all these other zombies. That way you don't aggro them. Keep the bloater's attention. Drag them out into the open. And then you get close to them like this. Wait for them to start sprinting. And then you just run away. And he'll fall on his own. And that's how you deal with them uh, without when you don't have a ranged weapon. Okay, so we'll start off hitting this building here. Uh, we'll grab a rucksack, try to get the food. Just us in here for now. Now your first initial loot passes, guys. Um, you're gonna have the tendency to want to loot everything in the building. You can do that. Um, but your main focus is just trying to get your hands on the, the rucksacks. So if you don't have the inventory and you're kind of in a rush, just grab the rucksacks and go. Come back later on um, and get the get the rest of it. But I know I have that car. So um, one thing we should do is uh, we're going to check the car and see if it has a gas can in it. So we didn't get any food out of that food spot, which sucks. No gas in the car, fortunately. So we'll drop those two items in there. Uh, we'll head down and grab the fuel first. Uh, we got another bloater. Just want to make sure there's no screamers around. Good.
Mm. There it is. We're really making this place better. One step at a time. Okay, so our infirmary is built. Now, there's a couple different things we need to take into consideration. Um, we got to start thinking about our food. We enacted rationing, which is just a Band-Aid. Um, we don't want to keep doing that because it's really going to tank our morale super, super low. And um, we, there's a there's a stamina penalty to it right now. Until we unlock our, or level up our cook, we're going to we're gonna have that stamina penalty. So we got to figure out, okay... What are we going to do long term? We need to figure out how to bandage this food loss up early game as fast as possible. Now, this bloater is kind of in my AO, so I'm going to kind of get his attention. There it is. Let him pop. So yeah, we gotta start thinking, what are we gonna do for food? Uh, I got two, uh, generally what I do is my first outpost that I aim for is always a food outpost. Uh, I'm gonna get this plate time just to see if we can get lucky and get a sample, nothing. Uh, but I generally go for a food outpost right off the bat. That That's kind of how, what I do to patch up that food loss. Um, but the crappy thing is the only food outpost you can get is either this one here, which does nothing for you, or this one here, which is okay, but it overlaps with your base, so you can't even use out, uh, you can't even use traps on it. So the only real viable food outpost is here in the Swine and Bovine. This one is like meta. This is a really, really good food outpost, um, but this one's in plague territory, and we'd have to kill a plague heart before we can do that. So your only option really is this location, which is generally what I go for to bandage up the food just real quick. It's, it's not a permanent outpost whatsoever, or we can go into our base. We got extra resources. And we can build a garden. Uh, because I have that gardener, um, I can kind of start benefiting from this early on, but this is 13 materials to start building right now, and I'm like, in, or, you know, I got to now compare. Do I want the garden over a workshop right now? Like, what's going to benefit me more? Um, I'm kind of on the fence right now of what I want to do. We're going to kind of let this go play out. I don't have another outpost that I would claim. Like, there's no, like nothing else. Damn. So, that was fast, guys. I've never had curveballs activate on day one. Okay, so this is uh, the finer things in life. Luxury items are more sought after uh, than anything else right now. There is a wave of enthusiasm for the finer things in life. So that's going to kind of benefit us. So now you, we got it. This is the whole new curveball system you got to take into consideration. That's saying with um, trading with you other enclaves right now is going to pay out a lot more influence for trade items. Uh, I got a couple that I could sell right now. So we're going to try to take advantage of that. But also, I'm not going to overly prioritize it either. We're going to, we're going to, that curveball should be around for at least 30, 40 minutes. Try to see if we can get some more materials. That way we can get both the workshop and the garden built. Yep, there it is. Now, our survivor here is getting tired. So we're going to want to get her back to base, swap her out. I, I do need the meds also, but we'll come back for those. Now, I activated the rationing. And now, if you guys look, right now we're going to lose three food a day when the day ticker hits. Um, but if we can get... Looks like a plague bloater. I don't know if we'll be able to get the... Uh, Ooh, okay, we got it. I don't know if we'll be able to get the outpost before. Uh, I mean, I could get it right now, realistically, if I wanted to. And I think we might do that just to cut down on our food loss. Because right now we're going to lose three food, so that means when the day ticker goes, we're going to lose 1.5 of food and a half.
Okay, so I'm going to swap these two cars for right now. The survey car has a bigger trunk. So our materials are sitting at 20 right now. Um, I'm home. Who missed me? So what I'm going to do with that, now that we're that high, I'm going to go ahead. We'll get the workshop building. And now because we got the community gun, that's what this has become. I only have one right now, so we're going to play a musical gun. Make sure you take your stamina items and stuff. The rest of this can stay on her. And uh, we're going to swap survivors. He's really, really beat up, so we're going to go with Wes here. He's the less beat up. And I think what happens during this curveball is your community automatically finds um, trade items also. Yeah, you can see. how. Look how many trade items we got already. That's crazy. So we're going to make a fortune off all this stuff. But first things first. Let's get our inventory squared away. Stamina, heals, uh, switch that melee weapon out. Grab the gun. Okay. So I am gonna go down, we'll claim this outpost really quick. Now this is just to kind of curb a little bit more of that food loss. This should bring us down to where we're gonna be losing less than a food a day, I think. Maybe half a food, or, or no, we'll lose one food a day, I think. Now, some of you guys might wonder why I go out and foot a lot. Find anything here. Uh, another reason. Why I I, new outpost is prepped and good to go. I take my time and, and you know, just walk down. Say, but a little more work here could pay off. I came on foot from there to here. Not a very far walk. Um, I didn't have to fight a single zombie. If I would have drove my car down here, every zombie in this area would have aggroed and I'd had to fight every single one of them. Um, so it's just small things like that you want to kind of just keep in your mind. I'm just going over here real quick to do this thing. Why complicate it? All I wanted to do was claim this outpost and loot. I don't want to spend resources. I don't want to spend stamina items. I don't want to spend... Oh, that's a better backpack, so we're going to grab that. I don't want to spend bullets. I don't want to do... I don't want to risk injury. I don't want to waste fuel in my car. Um, I don't want to risk my car getting blown up. There's all these little things you got to think of just to come down 10 feet to claim an outpost. You know what I mean? Why? So just... I'll, I'll just walk. You know what I mean? Just, it, it's not a big deal. Yeah, maybe it took me 10 seconds longer, but I guarantee you're going to spend more time fighting zombies and wasting more resources than if you just spend an extra 10 seconds walking. That's the same thing with fast searching. Uh, people say, why don't you fast search? Because there's no point. If, if I get a search crash, I can now spend the next 10 minutes fighting a bunch of zombies. Looting is supposed to be about gaining resources. You know what I mean? So if you're out here looting a gas station, and I this is the example I try to use for people. If, if my goal is, to, I, I'm short on fuel. I need fuel in my, bath, my base. I go down to this gas station. I start looting, right? If I say I fast search, I get a search crash, whole horde of zombies shows up, it's mayhem, I'm starting to get swarmed, I throw three molotovs trying to burn these huge hordes of zombies, juggernaut shows up, I light them up with 50 bullets, you know, and, and then things finally calm down. Now I just wasted three molotovs, 50 rounds, couple stamina items, and what did I gain? Okay, now I'm going to loot this building out. I'm going to get one rucksack, which only replaces the three Molotovs that I just threw. You know what I mean? So it's like, but people, as soon as they turn their resources into items, they disregard the fact that there's still a resource cost to those Molotovs. You know what I mean? Every Molotov you throw, you're throwing gas. 
guys. You got to think of it like that. Like I'm throwing two gas right now, or every time you put a, a, a gas can in your car, okay, this is two gas. You know what I mean? Like you got to you got to remember, there's a number tied to all of that. So that's one of those things you got to you got to keep taking into consideration. Is uh, don't go try to loot a bag of ammo, but shoot 500 bullets in the process because now, yeah, you got a bag of ammo, but now you just used up all your ammo. You're just replacing. You're not gaining anything. So your loot run should try to be as clean as possible. And we're getting freaking... Oh my god, that's OP, guys. That uh, curveball right now. Okay, so I got a zombie on me. Right. Uh, let's see. So now with that food, yep, we're only losing one food a day. We're we're golden, guys. Now we are losing two meds a day, which that's a pretty big hit. Um, but we'll be all right. We'll be all right, medicine wise. I got three days worth of medicine, six days worth of food right now with rationing. As soon as rationing goes away, we'll probably still be losing about three to four. Um, but that workshop's building. Um, uh, now I'm gonna start going to look at that that enclave but before i do that they're gonna want me to hunt down plague samples i know this so what we're gonna do is i want to try to get my hands on a crossbow because it's going to help me get plague samples better now if you were lucky and you got a crossbow here good for you you know you you, you beat the game my friends i give you progress i have not got my crossbow yet so one of the areas I know I can almost guarantee a crossbow is here. In these barns, I just showed it the other day on stream. Uh, you could potentially get the uh, classic crossbow. I was about to say hunter. No, the classic crossbow is almost always in the, one of those type of sheds in the boxes in the back. Let's set up here. Now, this building is in plague territory, so fighting zombies here will potentially wake up a heart. So we want to make sure we avoid fighting any zombies outside of stealth. I don't want to stick around here for very long. All quiet. At least as quiet as it can get this close to a play card. Okay, so <clears throat> get inside this building. Damn. All right, so this sucks. These uh, two chests are the ones I was talking about. Usually you'll have a crossbow in them. They're both looted. So we'll search these other ones, see if we can get lucky. <clears throat> if not, we can get food and ammo out of here, so that that's not a bad pull either. There's the food. See, I like when uh, playthroughs go like this, where I can show you guys um, <clears throat> things not necessarily working out in my favor and how I'm going to respond to it. And that's what I was trying to tell you guys in the beginning about State of Decay being a very dynamic game and there not being any script or set way things are supposed to happen. So I, I, you know, I could have been this other... Another contact would be, hey, you know, do this, guys. You're going to get a crossbow. You're going to do this. You're, and then it's like, but dude, I looted that same location. I didn't get a crossbow. Now your whole entire uh, scenario or your whole entire guide is irrelevant because I don't have the same items as you now. Like right now, I, I did get a crossbow. This is a terrible crossbow, um, but it is a crossbow. Um. So it, it kind of null and voids, like, you know, if you say I, I got one in the beginning, I would have not shown you guys this barn or where to get a crossbow if your other location failed. Now, if you don't get one out of here also, guys, 
Um, say you looted those campsites up there and you came to this barn to try to get your crossbow and you still don't get one from here. All done here. Let me know in the comments if that happens to you. Um, because you got some shit luck. <laughs> uh, for real. But uh, if not, uh, what you could do is... That's it. Um... You're shit out of luck. Until I can think of another location outside of these two the starter spots. I, I mean, I know of other spots deeper in the map, but I wouldn't advise you guys to go that far for a crossbow this early on. Um, worst case scenario is you can upgrade to a level two workshop and craft one. Uh, it, real talk, guys, if, if you really... there, So we just lost food. Uh, if you are having that bad of luck finding a crossbow, you can um, you can craft them. Now, this crossbow I got is really, really terrible because it's the hunting crossbow and the bolts penetrate. So most of the time when you shoot these bolts, you'll never get them back. And uh, materials are hard to come by in Lethal Zone, so I, I, I don't like to use this crossbow. Uh, I think I'm going to farm my samples. Uh, by hand, I'm not even going to use it because I don't. First off, I don't even know if I have bolts for it. All the bolts that we got out of this shed were light bolts, and this one uses heavy. Yeah, we got light. So we just heard that barrel. Check the map. Sounds like it's up top there, so we don't have to worry about it. Okay, I got five heavy bolts. So we can use those if we... If we really want to be cheeky and try to get these damn plague samples. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to head down... Um, to the Enclave. I'm going to grab as many trade items as I can grab. No room for that. Load the car. Now, I know for a fact when we went down here before, there was the Feral. Um, and... I, I tell you, I, I tried to explain this. Plague, or, um, zombie freaks in State of Decay, their spawn locations where is semi-persistent. So they will hang out. Even if you leave render and come back, they'll kind of still be in the same area. Um, bloaters, ferals, screamers. So you want to kind of try to take that into account. So I know that there was a feral down there. So when I head down there, I'm, I'm just remembering, hey, there was a feral here. I got to be careful when I get out of my car. Uh, I don't want to be surprised by anything. And some people might see that feral and then come, we just had another freaking thing deposited right now. So many items. But I do want to take advantage of this sale. I probably won't even better sell everything because the items are going to be worth a lot. No, we're just looking, seeing if we could see that feral that was over here. Looks good. I already know some people are going to ask, why do you pin your car up against stuff when you park? As you guys know, Lethal Zone has very, very uh, soft cars. Hi. So we'll agree the to this. The way to collect samples is by killing plague zombies. The best place to find trade them is in the territory around a plague heart. 
those things basically infect their whole environment. It's really ugly. Or you could just destroy the plague heart itself to get a bunch of samples. That's more dangerous. Some advice? Make sure you bring plenty of gear on this one. Helping out like this is a good way to make friends. Let's hope this pays off. We could use allies out here. You looking to trade? All right. See, everything was only selling for 738. Is that what it's supposed to sell for? Or maybe I shouldn't be selling right now? I feel like generally you can pull a higher amount on some of this stuff. I don't know, maybe not. Whatever. We'll, we'll sell it. I mean, that's all the influence that they had anyways. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so I parked my car up against things because the cars in Lethal Zone are very, very squishy. So what happens is, is say right now I'm out here looting, right? And I aggro a bunch of zombies. I got to make a quick getaway. What happens is you get in your car and say I was parked like right here. All of the zombies, what they do is they swarm your vehicle. They'll jump on every point. They'll jump on the sides. They'll jump on the hood. Now, in Lethal, all it takes is a zombie to be on your hood for like three seconds. And boom, your car's on fire, about to explode. Ferals, even faster. Um, so what you do is when you park, always pin your car up against something. Because now if I have to make a quick getaway, I can jump in my car. The zombies can only jump on the sides. They can't damage the engine. Now, if I don't have a door, like, yes, they could pull me out. So sometimes if you can find, like, an L shape that you could pin your car up against, that's good. Um, but generally, I would have doors on my car anyways. But, yeah, you park up against something, and now you can make that getaway. You don't have to worry about the zombies jumping on your hood and destroying your car. So that's why you'll see me park like that. Now, I just got my first heavy weapon, which is nice. There we go. So let's go around. We're going to farm up some samples real quick. We just need two for the mission. Now here I could if I could line these guys up with the pen. Nope. That's the only benefit than penetrating crossbows. If you can actually line up some zombies, you can get two for one like that. But as you guys can see, that bolt went off into... Or you could shoot where you have like a backstop. See if the bolt sticks. Nothing. Alright. Oh, that see there's my other bolt. Stuck to the wall there. Now, early game, uh, if you do see those transformer boxes like that, uh, definitely try to loot them because you're going to need the parts of the circuitry to uh, upgrade your workshop. So, yeah, anytime you can shoot with this up against a backstop, I guess it's not too bad, but you can see the bolts are unrecoverable. Got one there.
Here we go. Three shots left out the crossbow. Now, one of the things we could do is uh, I'm going to go empty out my inventory a little bit into my car. Uh, I could hit this SMB, try to see if we can get some uh, a bag of food while we're here. Might as well. Two birds, one stone. We only need one more sample anyways for the mission. Now, this uh, Enclave actually had some pretty decent stuff for sale. Later. Uh, the energy drinks were something I would Look consider buying. Uh, the gas can's not a bad pull. Outside of that, and the material's not bad either. I, I probably wouldn't buy this. The water cooler would be a good pull, too. Um, yeah, see, this is worth 113 Right now, that, that's worth the big bucks, dude. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't uh, I could pull one of those water coolers potentially from a site So it's like why spend it, the, the money on it right now and then freaking next episode. I'll pull one I'll be super upset that I wasted the influence Damn Another luxury item. Ugh. Okay, so we got a we got one what shot left. This territory. This place ain't never gonna feel safe. my last shot. Okay, so we're completely out of uh, bolts. I'll loot the rest of this place out later on. Now, generally, if you grab a ruck, I'd tell you to go drop it in your car. Uh, because the extra weight, uh, it's, it's not your friend. Especially if you do end up getting a fight. Because I don't have any more crossbow bolts, I'm going to be fighting these zombies. Take these two before they wander off, though. And another thing is, you don't want to, you need to do these kills in stealth because if I kill these zombies outside of stealth, I'm in plague territory. So it will alert uh, the play cart. So you, we got to make sure that you are doing this in stealth. So what you can do here, if you really want to be super cheeky, um, I aggro this zombie, so if I kill him, it'll count towards waking up the play cart. But what you can do, if you're close enough to an enclave at least, 
the dead slack jaws. Just bring it over to them. They'll kill it, and it doesn't count. And no sample. <clears throat> but one zombie's really not that big of a deal. Um, you're all out. You can do up to like 8 to 10 before it even starts to really become a problem. There it is. Perfect. All right, now this community, when, uh, make sure you have your, your back clear because uh, every time you finish this, hey. they give you a rec sack of uh, fuel. With these plague samples, I can make something that'll cure blood plague if one of us gets infected. We're and happy to share the 500 rest. influence. So I'm going to buy their energy drinks and their Good. gas. Catch you later. I don't want to stick around here for very long. And that goes for running over zombies in plague territory, guys, too. Like, if you can avoid it, avoid it. Because uh, it counts towards waking up the heart. Now, I don't know if that feral is going to run all the way over here, so I'm going to wait a second. See if he comes around that rock. I think we're okay. Now this crossbow at this point, I don't have any bolts for it, so it's just a paperweight. Um, I could craft more, but they're very expensive. Most of us are still alive tomorrow. And uh, as you guys know, I wanted to build a garden to kind of start chewing at that food loss a little bit. So we're just going to put it away. There's no point in carrying it right now. It's legitimately just a paperweight. Um, but early on, one thing I tell you guys to focus on is locker management. Um, it gets carried away, especially in Lethal Zone resources parts things like that um they're they're very very needed crafting it's expensive everything's very expensive so you're going to run into parts points where you don't have parts you don't have certain resources and you're going to be short so what i tell people is locker management parts are really really hard to come by um even in lower difficulties you run into a lot of issues with parts but well, then i look at people's lockers like dude how do you get parts how do you have so many parts and it's like well, I also, I don't have a bunch of weapons that are just sitting in my locker that I'll never use. Um, so right now, when I click on my gun tab, I need this for right now. It's the only crossbow I got. I go on my melee weapons. So I'm like, okay, let me see. Is there any melee weapons here I can I can scrap? Uh, I got a hatchet, carpenter's hatchet. So I know for a fact, I'll keep this hatchet. I'll scrap this one. This um, this one has better, just remember, it's a better bladed weapon. So I was like, I'll, I'll, scra I'll salvage this one. Uh, I got tons of blunt weapons here, plus my people, all my people have melee weapons on them right now. I can get rid of this pipe. And um, compare these weapons. This is a better durability, so I'll get rid of this wooden bat. And just like that, guys, I'm just going through my locker, seeing if there's anything I don't need that, that I could break down. Oh, we got like this six sock backpack. I'm not going to use it. I could sell it, but I'll break it down for parts. Same thing with these seven slots. I'll keep one seven slot just in case I recruit somebody that only has a six. Um, but that, and then I see I got spare parts to be salvaged. So we'll start breaking down those weapon remains. Um, and just like that, I'm up to 241. And once this finishes, I'll be well over 300. So I just got over three, um, I just got myself up to 300 parts by just cleaning out some weapons that I just didn't need uh, that are literally just going to sit in the box and not and to collect dust. They're not doing anything for you, just having those weapons. Uh, so yeah, if you can, try to get rid of them as best as you, as best as you can. Um, but that curveball is still going right now. And as you can see, it's, it's giving me some really, really good stuff. Um, Supply crate full of luxury items found. So there is a luxury item crate on the map somewhere. Where is that? Over here. Hey, we've been robbed. Stop that thief. Now, this mission, Shit. anytime it happens, make sure you do it because they actually take the food away from you. Um, and now if I were to log out right now, it would despawn this mission and the food would still be gone. So you want to make sure that you're taking care of this mission 
um, the second it happens. So I think it's Jose's mission, right? Yep. So uh, it says um, to go after the people, you got to swap to Jose. So let's swap over to him real quick. Come here. I want to um, talk this over. I got to go drop the gun and everything. Sure. We got another curveball that just showed up. Okay, so Jose is kind of beat up. Now, you can kill this person. I wouldn't advise it this early on unless you're an absolute pro. Hey, do what you got to do. Um, but I would say it's not worth the fight this early in the game, especially with the amount of ammo it takes to kill a, a human survivor and, and lethal. Just get your food back and just bounce. You can get the food without killing them. Okay, so now we got to talk to her. Tiger. Okay, so the espresso stand. Uh, it's the one right outside of our base here. You better drop your shit. It's my shit now. Can we take a moment here? All right. Can we take a moment here? And he drops. He drops the food. He's picking up. Us anymore. That's the K for you. He didn't act. That screamer wasn't screaming for me. It was screaming because of him. But it still is going to draw zombies to this area. So we're just gonna loot and keep it moving. More of the same. There it is. Yeah, so anytime you get your food stolen, make sure you, you get on top of it. Because, yeah, it's, <clears throat> it, it's pretty impactful. You lose a whole rock. Okay, so now we're back up to nine. We're good to go. Uh, we're sitting pretty on influence right now. I wish we had another enclave on the map that we could sell to. Uh, I, I could generate one, realistically. And take advantage of this curveball while it's available and the way you obviously if you guys have been playing this for a little bit uh i could hit right here find other survivors actually hello, let's do it real quick there? i'm looking for survivors hello Give hey, you feeling <clears throat> today? okay so let's see where they spawned in Uh oh, I gotta give him a chance to show up. <clears throat> okay, so now where are they? Okay, so they're down the road here. So we're gonna take advantage of this. Uh... No place to put it. And go sell to them. Now, like I said, that's one of the things about State of Decay. Very dynamic. Um, so you could be playing and you're not going to probably have this curveball right off the bat. So uh, you might not be as influence heavy as I am. Um, but it's not, it's just, if, even if you don't have this curveball, um, you're going to have a lot of excess loot and stuff like that early game. And if you need more people to trade with, this is the same process. If you get into a situation where, like, hey, I need more I people to trade for. for you. Details forthcoming. Hmm. Um, then you go ahead, call in an enclave, boom, you got more people to trade with. 
But trade is pretty important early on. Uh, if you get get the influence flowing, it allows you to get more outposts quickly. And uh, really get your resources under under control. Get some map control. So I'm scouting to see what zombies are in the area. Good, we can get in here without having to fight. Because this is plague territory, so if we fight here, we're going to wake up a heart. No room for that. Hey, yo. Uh, let's see, we talk to her. Finish the mission. I think you even get influence for this, right? Uh, don't be a stranger now. Come I don't on remember. In. No. It's good to see you. So let's go ahead. I got some stuff to trade. Oh, that sounds about right. Damn, so they're already out of influence. Let me check to see if they have anything I want. Uh damn, they actually got some pretty good resources. So um We'll buy the food. I got extra money, so we might as well buy the food because there there still is food in my area a little bit. I can get a bag out of here. No, that's it. Yeah, I can get a bag out of here because we already looted this site. Um, and a bag down here. So there's a little bit of food in my area, but uh, this area cascade does drain pretty quick. And then once the food's gone here, you're going to have to start pushing more in into the center of the map or up north or whatnot to pull food. Uh, so I, I say anytime you get a chance to buy, you know, a, a hard to come by resource, which is like food, ammo, I'd say really all the um, all the resources are kind of hey, viable at, at this point in the game. Let's do some business. Yeah, that sounds about right. But let's uh, buy the meds. Yep, and we're still leaving here with more influence than we came with. Now, if I did have some extra stuff, we'd better get that little influence back that I just. So I think, how much am I short? Hey. Going. I got some stuff to trade. Oh, it's only 34. It's not a big deal. We got most of their influence. Now, on my way back to base, I would like to get another repair kit if Better possible. Not screw around here if I want to avoid blood plague. I did I did get one, but that one I like to keep for I like that always at least have one as an emergency uh, if I blow my car up. Hmm. So that screamer there I know if I drive past him, I'm going to aggro him. So we're going to have to uh, go wide. And uh, we'll have to get the repair kit out another time. Mm, maybe. Hold on. Let me see. It's clear for now. But in plague territory, more Zeds are always close. Might be okay. Area seemed quite clear. No, the only problem is this building likes to spawn the shit out of zombies. Uh, yep, you can see them on the ground in there, piled up. Hmm. Yeah, if I had a crossbow, I, I, I would say go for it. Right now... Not worth the, the hassle that... Because uh, I'm going to aggro up shit. Uh, there's no way to really get in their melee without waking everything up. So that's a, that's a no-go right now. That screamer's going to scream if I get too close. Yep, there it is. So he's going to stir it. So they just stirred a nearby plague heart, which means it's not awake yet. But uh, if more stuff happens, if another screamer goes off, it's probably going to wake up. So we're going to have to be careful in that area now. All right, so let me take a look at our resources, guys. 
Uh, we're doing pretty damn good on resources right now. Uh, everything's not high. We're not we're not like you know rolling in it, but it, it's everything's decent. Um, and that's always my main focus when I get into my first you know session of lethal is get my resources good, get the map controlled, get our resources, everything. We still got another curveball that needs to get activated. Uh, we've done some of our main missions. We got some enclaves set up. Uh, main focus now is going to be figuring out how we're going to approach starting to clear out play cards, um, getting more resources and everything under control, and, and going from there. So that's what we're going to pick up from next episode, guys. Uh, hopefully this guide, again, is uh, helping you guys out, have a better understanding of you know how to approach things, how to have a mindset and things like that. So uh, thank you again. I appreciate the love and support. If you guys haven't on your way out, smash that like button. Uh, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. And if you want to see more of this, hey, just drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys thought. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.